Welcome back, everyone, to episode 135 of Fine Music. And today, Fred was not late. It was just an illusion. <laughs> Cast it from your minds. Think instead about the musician that Fred is going to reveal right now. Uh, one of the greatest soul du duels is Sam and Dave. And uh, in the 60s, they had a slew of incredible singles and albums. But the, due to alcohol and drug problems, they broke up. And in 1970, Sam Moore went on to a solo career. It's a great soul classic album, Plenty Good Lovin', but it's dubbed The Lost Album because Atlantic Records shelved the album. It was produced by the great King Curtis, the amazing saxophone player who on the album not only produces it, but plays alto, tenor, and baritone saxophone. But unfortunately, King Curtis, who was at the height of his career, he had a best-selling album live at the Fillmore West on the charts when he produced this album. He was on a roll and he was shot and killed in his front of his home in New York City. Mm. So Atlantic sat on the album and decided not to put it out. And, and uh, two, 2002, this album was released again. Finally, it has Aretha Franklin's backup band on this album. She's she's on keyboards, and uh, Bernard Pure is on drums. Eric Gale and Cornelius Dupree is on guitars. Danny Hathaway is on keyboards on this album, and the Sweet Inspirations back them up. This was a classic soul album that probably would have been a hit if it got released when it did. Hmm. The, uh, the title song cuts off, kicks off this album and it's had, followed by a soul version of Tennessee Walls. He does the version of The Miracle Shop Around, a blues tune, Get Out of My Life Woman, Lee Michaels, Heidi Ho, he just pours out his soul on this album, and it's a shame it didn't come out when it was supposed to. I think he would have had a hit album with this. He would have had a career that rolled along through the 70s, as popular as soul music was in the early 70s. But unfortunately, the album got shelved and finally came out, like I said, in 2002. It's a masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. Is this King Curtis just soars on, on saxophones through this album and more just gives his best. It's an incredible album. Later in 2006, an album was released overnight sensational. The album uh, kicks off with Winona duetting with him on an Ann Peebles standard, soul standard, I Can't Stand the Rain. The whole album is duets. Most of them work, but there's a couple that are questionable. I think they put some of these people on because of name power more than soul power. Uh, but the ones that work make this album worth having. Uh, Springsteen's on Better to Have and Have Not, and it becomes an instant soul classic with the two of them working together. Moore was already on a Springsteen album quite a few years ago that came out in the 80s, and he's showing up. Sam Moore will be doing a duet with Springsteen on his new album, of soul tunes that Springsteen's coming out with later this month. 
another one that works pretty well that's surprising is John Bon Jovi, hmm. uh, Looking for a Love, the old, it's an old blues, blues soul tune that Jay Giles made popular in the 70s. Steve Winward and Sting is on this album and Sting surprisingly really pulls it off um, on a song called None of Us Are Free. Paul Rogers is on this. Nikita Costa, soul singer. They arranged most of the duets really well without overpowering or taking up too much of Sam Moore's space on a song. There's only a few that don't work, like with Fantasia or Mariah Carey is on a cut. Those people could have been left off and Travis Tiffin is on a cut. Uh, the, the great duet on this album is surprisingly is Becca Bramlett on Don't Play This Song. It's an old Benny King tune. And she is the daughter of Delaney and Bonnie. Oh, wow. And she's got two albums out, but she's been on over 50 or 60 cuts on different people's albums as a backup singer. It's a shame she's not more well known. And some reviewer pointed out that it's too bad the whole album wasn't a duet between Sam Moore and Becker <laughs> herself because she's an amazing vocalist. Also on this album is uh, Robert Randolph on guitar, Eric Clapton and Billy F. Gibbons. And the album ends with a moving vocal duet with Billy Preston on You're So Beautiful. This is uh, Billy Preston's last recording before he died. And it's, it's very moving. It, it's a touching song done again, uh, the old Joe Cocker tune, but done it's in a special heartwarming way. I, I recommend both albums, especially Plenty Good Lovin' if you like soul music. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand the rain. I love the Lowell. Lowell George has a version of that song. And I, I, do you guys know of anyone that's before Graham? I think it was Graham Central Station did that. Can't stand um, the rain. And and Peebles was the first one. Okay. Yeah. The Memphis know. from the Memphis recordings. Uh, Willie Mitchell produced it. Um, oh, cool. Humble Pie has a great version of it really? also. <laughs> That's right. Interesting. Good call. And Eric Gale, God, that's a name I haven't heard for a long time. Yeah. He's great. He's great. I mean, all these guys that back up on this album are on the greatest recordings Atlantic ever records ever put out. I, I don't know how anybody could not like Sam and Dave. I mean, that those guys are great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they yeah. did get back together at least for a while because I saw them open for the Clash. Oh, uh, wow. 1979. Yeah, that yeah, oh, they did yeah. get together, but unfortunately, from what I read, they didn't get along very well. Yeah, but they did it for trying. They tried their best. Hmm. Only two great albums, two uh, two great ones there. Yeah, yeah. Got to check that out. So. Find music fans. Sam, find Sam Moore. Mm -hmm. Plenty good loving. Overnight sensation. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 